In this video, I'm going to show you how to make AI agents that have web search functionality. I'll show you how to build one from scratch with N8N using Google's free programmable search engine API. Once you've set it up, you can give any agent access to Google search, and you can make all kinds of customizations to the search functionalities. You can change the regions and languages that it searches in, and you can change the types of results that it will surface. So first I'm going to start with a blank workflow. Then I'm going to create an agent. This is what it will look like when it starts. And the first thing you need to do is give the agent a chat model to use. There's lots of models to choose from, but I'm going to use OpenAI. You just need to make sure you have your AI credentials set up already. Then I'm going to pick a model. I'm going to go with GPT-5 mini. The reason you want to give your agents custom search tools is because a lot of the models cannot search the web through the API. If you're using a chat model through the API, most of them won't be able to search the web in real time. They can do that in ChatGPT, but they can't actually do that through the API. There are exceptions to this, like the deep research models. These can browse the web, but they're much more expensive to use. There are other models like Perplexity, which can browse the web in real time through the API. With agents, it's really easy to give any model web browsing access using a programmable search engine. Now that I've given it a brain, I just need to give it a tool. And I'm going to go with HTTP request tool. HTTP requests allow you to use all kinds of APIs. So if it's not built into N8N already, you can still work with tools like the programmable search engine from HTTP requests. And I'm going to name this Google search. So now we just need to configure our programmable search engine. To do that, just search programmable search engine on Google, and it'll be the first result here. It's on programmablesearchengine.google.com. You'll see a page like this, and you just hit get started. And then you'll be taken to the new search engine creator. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. And in this search, it's going to be specifically searching in Italy. You can also set it to search specific sites. So you could build a separate tool that only searches your website, which could be helpful for internal linking. But I wanted to search the entire web, so I'm going to check this option. I'm going to leave image search and safe search off, and I'm going to click I'm not a robot and hit create. Then it'll say your new search engine has been created. You can even click this link and preview it. And now I'm going to customize it further. Now we just need to get the API set up so that we can work with this search engine in N8N. To do that, you go down to programmatic access on the sidebar here, and you hit get started. And this will take you to a little introduction page, and you can get a key right here. So just hit get a key, and it'll ask you to select or create a project in Google Cloud Console. If you don't have any projects set up in Cloud Console already, you can create a new one. So select or create a project and hit next. Then you'll get this window popping up saying you're all set and then show me the key. Then it'll show you your API key and you can copy this to your clipboard. You can also save this API key for easy access later. And now we just need to put this key into the AI agent's HTTP request. To do that, you turn on send query parameters and then specify query parameters using fields below. And then for the name, you type in key, all lowercase, and then you paste in your API key. Once this is set up, you can also find and manage your API key in the API console in Google Cloud. If you click that link, it'll take you right to it and you can view the key again. You can also add restrictions for how the key gets used. Then I'll set up the request method. It'll be set to get by default, and then you need a URL. So this is the URL you want to put in. It's HTTPS colon slash slash www.googleapis.com slash custom search slash V1. And I'll put that in the description so you can just copy paste it. This is the URL that you'll need to do if you want to connect to it programmatically. Authentication is going to be none by default because we didn't set up any kind of authentication to use this. The next thing you need to do is add your search engine ID into Airtable. And that's going to be right here in the overview search engine ID. So just copy that. Back into N8N, you add another parameter under the specify query parameters. Call this one CX, all lowercase, and paste in your search engine ID. 
And we need one more field, which is the query that we're going to be sending it. And these queries will actually be done by the AI. So we're going to add one more parameter and we're going to press Q. And that's all you need to put, lowercase. And then for the value, you click right here, let the model define this parameter. Then it'll say defined automatically by the model. Next up, we will specify how many results should be returned per search. So we'll hit add parameter again and type in num all lowercase, and I'm just gonna put five. So that means it'll return the five top search results every time. You can set that to 10 or 50 or 100, however many you like. Just keep in mind that the more search results you return, the more context window you're going to use. So if you're running an AI agent that does five Google searches and each search returns 100 results, you're going to flood its context window and it's going to make it hard to actually complete the tasks. So it's better to specify a smaller number of results to return. Next up, I recommend adding a timeout because sometimes these hang and it'll stall your agents. So just add a timeout here. It's under the options at the very bottom. And then you just pick the timeout and by default, it's set to 10 seconds, which is fine. Lastly, we'll give this tool a description. And that's all that I need to do to set up a Google search. So now I'll test this out to see if I can get Google search results. By default, your agent should have chat functionality. So just hit open chat. So now I'm giving it a test prompt. Please browse the web for the best invoicing software and return all the data you find. So we'll send that over and you can see the agent going to work. Now you can see that it's doing web searches. So if you look in the logs of your chat, you'll see that it is currently doing web searches. So here's this one, best invoicing software 2025, invoicing software for small businesses, free invoicing software. So even by default, agents will do a bit of a query fan out process. You don't even have to tell it to do that. And you can see the data that it's pulling up in the output. Now that it's done, it's going to send a message back. And here's what it came up with. We've got FreshBooks, Zoho, QuickBooks, and a bunch of other ones. It even says, here's the top features, free and low cost options, so on and so forth. Then if I wanted to customize how it actually uses this tool, I can just specify that in the prompt. So you open up the AI agent and under options, you go system message, and then you can give it instructions on how to work with web search what kind of output you're looking for, and how to format it. To make it even easier, you don't actually have to recreate this tool every time you want to give an agent search functionality. You can actually just copy it and paste it. So I'm on Windows, I'll hit Control C and Control V, and now I've just copied my Google search tool and I can go attach it to another agent. You can also use these tools for any other AI model. So for example, this one here is message a model. It's not actually an agent. This is just an AI node and you can connect tools to them as well. You just have to make sure you're using a model which has function calling, which at this point is most models that are out there. So for example, GPT-5 supports function calling. You can actually check to see which models have function calling on OpenAI. You can go to the compare models page and just scroll down and look for function calling and it'll show you if the models that you're interested in using can do function calls. By default, these search engines will browse the whole web. So in this example, I only want it to search in Italy. To do that, I'm going to go back to the overview under the basic settings, and I'm gonna scroll down to the search features and select a region. Then I'm going to select Italy, and I can even turn on region restricted results, which means it won't even show results that are outside of my region. I can also set it to use a specific language. So maybe I only want Italian language search results. I can do that as well. There's actually a lot more search features that you can do. You can specify what kind of results it can and cannot return. You can even restrict it to certain schema types. For example, if I select product schema, then my search engine would only return products. So there's a lot of customizable use cases that you can come up with for programmable search engines. Now that I've made those changes to only search in Italian and in Italy, let's see what we can come up with. So first up, I'm going to ask the same thing again, and this time I'll even ask it in Italian. Now I'm pasting that into the chat and I'm going to ask it the exact same question, but in Italian and we should see Italian search results. 
Now we can look at the searches that it's doing and we can see they are in Italian. And you can look at the search results and you can see that only Italian websites are being surfaced and the results being returned are in Italian. And here's the answer that it returned. Again, it's all in Italian. So that's how you can customize the search engine to your region and language and get localized results. If you want to get fancier with it, you can actually customize your search right from the HTTP request. That just involves using a lot more parameters that you send in. So you can see here in the template, it says search terms num equals count. So if you remember, we specified num in there. So if you look at all the parameters that it's specifying in here, you can take that and customize your requests. You can even add dynamic variables or let the agent decide. So you can customize this even further. You can also take your Google search tool and copy and paste it into other NADN workflows. For example, I can take this Google search node and paste it into this agent and use this tool instead. For some quick troubleshooting, if you find that your agent isn't searching the web, you can see in my example here, it did 15 searches. You can actually just add in the system message a prompt, always use your web search tool. You might also get some timeout issues where it'll use too many tools and it'll actually stop the workflow. So you can actually add a limit for how many tools it's allowed to use. To do that, you just do max iterations and set it to something like 10. That means it's only allowed to revise itself 10 times before it's done and sends it over. You can set that to a lower number as well. Basically how agents work is they will iterate their answer several times until it feels like it's accomplished the task properly. Whereas a one-off chat model does not do that, which is why AI agents are smarter and have better outputs compared to chat message nodes. Just for fun, let's also test what happens if we disable the web search tool. So I'm going to unlink it here and just put it off to the side. And I'm also going to take out the always use your web search tool prompt because if I put that in there, it'll just say, I don't have a web search tool. So now I'll try asking it the same thing again. So here's the prompt again. I'll even add only live results, do not use your training data, because this should throw an error saying I can't actually browse the web. So let's give it a shot and see what it comes up with. And here's the result. It says I can't browse the web or fetch live results from the internet in this chat. I must use my offline capabilities only. So that just goes to show you cannot search the web through the API for a lot of these models. If you're using prompts through the API that involve web searches, they're likely hallucinating or relying on training data, which is why having Google search tools like this is handy. When you give your agent access to a Google search tool, it can use it freely. It can do multiple searches. It can do a query fan out and it can collect all kinds of data from the search results. Then you can customize it further and specify the country, the region, the location, the language, the types of results it's allowed to return and a lot more. The possibilities are endless. You can do all kinds of cool things with programmable search engines. And then you can pair that with other tools like page scrapers. This agent that I made has a Google search tool and a read web pages tool. So this is a page scraper and it can use both tools to complete the task. So it can do Google searches and read the web pages. And that recreates the functionality that you can get in ChatGPT and other tools where it can just do web searches and read web pages for you. A lot of the API based models can't do that. So you have to give them tools to do it. So that's it for this video. Go ahead and set up your own programmable search engine. It's really easy to do and it only takes a few minutes and the possibilities are endless. And then you can give the gift of web search to your AI agents. See you in the next one.